Hello there, Tuesday the 31st of January 2011. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. First of all, a little apology for yesterday's show. Bit of a sound problem yesterday, wasn't there? We had, I had to switch. Um, I actually record the sound twice. Once on my special little sound recording device, which is sitting next to me here, and also the sound recorded directly onto the camera. And what you heard yesterday was the sound come from the camera, which is not as good, but for some reason uh, the the sound recorded on my little device didn't work. It was very all noisy, so there was something wrong with that yesterday. So apologies uh, for the sound uh, yesterday, boys and girls. Well, we were talking about the old banker's bonus yesterday, that uh, Stephen, Stephen, oh, what's his name? Hang on. Stephen Hesser. And uh, it appears that he's not going to take it now, um, which is... Interesting, I suppose, is um, probably seen all the news stories and all the kerfuffle that's been going on here in the UK and uh, has indeed decided not to take his bonus. Um, I still stand by what I say yesterday. I think he actually deserved that bonus. He has, he's turned a billions of pounds profit into a, a billion point four, was it, or a billion point two profit, you know, in a very short space of time. I think he did very well and actually deserves... Uh, the bonus, you know, the worry is that if that happens too often, perhaps we won't get the right person in the job. And then and then what would happen if, if the bank just completely collapsed again? You know, it's it's all of a well, we don't really know, do we? So that's the old bankers thing. Uh, a couple of uh, stories, news stories I noticed yesterday on the BBC website is that university applications are down 9%. And I reckon a lot of that to do uh, with the fact that they have to pay 9,000, up to 9,000 pounds now, uh, these uh, young people, if they want to go to a university. But if, if I remember rightly, when I, was, when I was at that sort of university age, I had no desire whatsoever to, to go on for more learning and, and university life and, and stuff like that. You know, I, I think at that time there were more people that wanted to finish school and get to work as quickly as possible than there were wanted to go into universities. I mean, it's not for everyone. And, and I don't understand why um, so many young people since I was that age have wanted to go to university. Do you think they actually want to go and better themselves? Or do they just like the university life? Because we've all heard about that. And please don't come back and tell me it's not like that. I'm fully aware that you're out every night getting pissed and, 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 and up to all sorts. I know, because I've DJed at a couple of your functions, university. If there's any university people watching this, I know exactly what you will get up to. Is it that, that sort of few years of that sort of life that you're actually going to the university for rather than to learn? And therefore... If a high fee is installed in this country up to £9,000, is that why you've been put off, I wonder? Uh, do let us know uh, your thoughts on that, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Uh, also, I'm very pleased to see that the Home Secretary, Theresa May, lovely woman, dear, quite a nice lady. Uh, it says police will be forced to deal with antisocial behaviour if, if five households in one area complain about another resident. And I think this is brilliant news. I mean, because most roads, I'm afraid, do seem to have, or not, not most, a lot of roads or, 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 or estates do have one or two of these families. We're very lucky here where I live. There, doesn't, there isn't really a problem family here at all. Very lovely. They used to be, uh, not too far away from me. And when that family were moved, the burglaries in this area just almost disappeared to nothing. You know, so it may, you know, there's no proof, of course. I always remember coming down the road one night, only to, and as I turned into the road, of course, I got my headlights on, and I just saw two people with hoods on. I'm going back here about 15 years. Suddenly ran across the road and there was a car door open. So they'd obviously done this car over, nicked the radio or something like that. And we need this. We absolutely need this because there's too many of these families that absolutely get away with murder, upsetting people, you know, uh, people who Laura ride by in citizens who go out to work. And then while they're at work trying to earn their money, they come in and break in their houses. 
It's terrible, terrible. So good on you there, uh, Theresa May, for coming up with such a thing. I wonder, do you have a, a problem family or maybe a problem resident where you are? Maybe you live in one of those places, perhaps you're underneath someone who's got loud music. I just can't imagine how bad that can be. Well, I can actually. I can because when I had the squirrel problem in the loft um, sort of March last year, that simple noise of little pattering feet used to drive me absolutely mad. And I can only imagine if you've got someone above you who's playing loud music day and night. You know, or running about the place, perhaps there's no carpets and it's a, it's a wooden floor, you know, and, and you, can, you can every time they walk across. Actually, where my friend is, uh, my best mate at the moment, Ron is at the moment, he's in a place like that. Whenever the television is loud upstairs, he can actually hear it in his flat. And I can't think of anything worse than that. You know, I do like peace and quiet. I mean, it's funny, really, isn't it? You know, me, DJ, karaoke. And yet when I come home at night, I do like complete peace and quiet. I rarely have music on in the house. It's nice to be, to be silent, really. I mean, I'm, my head, unfortunately, I don't have silence in my head. I've got tinnitus. It's one of those things that go with the jobs, but I'm quite lucky uh, because I'm one of those people who can ignore it. You know, I can't actually hear it unless I listen for it. So now I've mentioned it, I can hear it again. Okay. But some people can't do that with the tinnitus. And it drives them mad and they have to have special hearing aids and things like that to try and mask the noise because they can't actually cure it. But to have a neighbour that's noisy, I'm very, very lucky here. I don't have noisy neighbours, none at no noisy neighbours in, in my little uh, square of houses. Uh, the lady next door is learning the saxophone and actually that, you wouldn't believe how, how well that travels. It's not a particularly loud instrument, you know, Probably downstairs I've got a piano with organ on it. Probably that organ is a lot louder than a saxophone. And yet the saxophone noise travels through my whole house. Okay? But it's no problem because I just told her, she said, oh, I'm very sorry. And um, she says, could I, what, what time do you want me to stop playing? I said, well, I'm usually in bed by about four o'clock in the afternoon for a couple of hours. Just between four and eight, if you could. And she's and she, she did it straight away. I would do exactly the same for her, you know. If she says, oh, we can hear your television at, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning, then I wouldn't turn it on. It's as simple as that. But then again, we have respect for each other, you see. I don't, I don't want her to stop playing the saxophone. Absolutely not. But it's surprising how an instrument like that can travel through. Because I think she plays in the kitchen. So it goes through the kitchen, through the wall, and up the stairs, and I'm in the bedroom on the end. And it does travel. We're not talking it like really loud, but you can hear it. You can hear it. And it's probably louder than you would think it is. <clears throat> it must be the frequency of the, um, of the instrument or something like that. But like I say, it's no problem because we respect each other. If there's a problem, then we tell the other one. And it's sorted straight away. Never, ever had a row with my neighbours. Lovely neighbours I've got. All of them, actually. All of them all around here. But other people are not so lucky. You know, you live next door to someone who thinks it's their right to turn up the music as loudly as they damn well want at any time of day or night. And I, I, I you know, to live next to or worse than underneath someone in one of those converted flats must be absolute hell. It really must be. Do you? Do you have to live like that? Do you find that, you know, there's music coming down through your ceiling several nights of the week? What's it like? Do let us know. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have indeed you ever said anything to your neighbour? Have you, you bonglers, excuse me, I hope you don't mind me saying, but can you turn your music down? It's very loud tonight. What was the reaction to that? And if that didn't work, what did you do after that, I wonder? And did it work? Let us know, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I have to say hello today to uh, Nick the Cabby, who has been uh, dress rehearsing because he's going to be on the television, boys and girls. He's going to be on that cookery show. And the name has disappeared. Come dine with me. Come dine with me. One of the, uh, uh, shall we say, I think more more nasty, nasty programmes, really. Because what happens is that um, there's a group of people, I think it's four. I've only watched a programme 
well, bits of the bro. I've never watched the whole bro. It's not my cup of tea at all to watch people cooking food. I, I just don't get it. Why do you want to watch someone cook food? But anyway, uh, so I think there's four of them. And each of them invite the other three round to their house and cook them a meal. And then the other three talk about it. And they, they can say how wonderful it was or they can sit there and slag it off. And, you know, I'd be a, a little bit peeved, really, to be honest. You know, if I'd cooked someone beans on toast and the other three started slagging me off, it would not please me at all, dear. It's probably going to do something else other than beans on toast. I don't know. But um, yeah, do you see what I mean? I just think that's nasty. For someone to have gone to so much effort and cook food, whether or not you like it, to actually say something derogatory around it. I mean, if you are, what did you think of the uh, lemon, I don't know, the lemon meringues? Oh, uh, they were OK, a little bit too lemony, but that's OK. But they don't. They, they, they slate it. Some of them slate the food. And I think that's, I just think it's vile. I don't know what it is about these TV programmes now that people want to watch people being vile about other people all the time. I'm glad I'm not like that at all, am I? I really am not. <laughs> I'm talking about vileness. Lovely to see. The only way is Essex is back on ITV2. Yes, boys and girls, that programme where the girls are all as ugly as sin, every last one of them, except for Nana. They've all got far too much makeup on. None of them have got natural breasts or lips. One of them looked like she's been in a car crash several times over. The boys, the boys, oh, God's sake. I mean, he was standing there in <coughs> what is known as this is the, the, the uh, I suppose that the star of the show now must be Joey Essex. Now that other idiot, uh, Mark, has gone off to a, a, a presenting TV show. He presents a TV show and it's just awful. All right, how's it going? My name's Mark. And, uh, God, it's just dreadful. Dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. And uh, Joey Essex, I think he's about 19 or 20. And uh, I think the beginning of Sunday's show started off with him standing there in a pair of very short briefs, also known as budgie smugglers, boys and girls. Budgie smugglers, these are the tightest briefs you've ever seen, and the reason they're called budgie sluggers is because it looks like you've stuffed a budgie down the front of the pants. <clears throat> and <laughs> I, d I just don't get it. I don't get the popularity of that program at all. My nephew, Jimmy, 14, absolutely loves it and looks up to Joey Essex. Joey Essex, who is as thick as a blank, quite good looking, but that's all he's got. Good looks. And, of course, money from doing that show. The trouble is, all these young people are watching this show and they're seeing how stupid and thick they all are and, 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 and how false it all is. How just totally false. You know, with the, with, the, with the implant, breast implants and this, that and the other. They're watching this show and they're also seeing these people getting loads of money for doing it. And that's what they want to do now. They want their own little versions of The Only Way is Essex. It's, it's just hideous. Hideous. Did you see Sunday's show? What did you think of it? Let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Do you have children, perhaps? Young children that are glued to the set that this is on. What, what do you think of them watching it, I wonder? I mean, it's very difficult to stop children watching anything now, isn't it? There's so many different... Everyone's got... A, all, every child has now got their own TV in a room, or if not, a computer thing that can get the, the various iPlayers from whichever TV station. Do you really think this is doing the children any good? Or is it a bit of harmless fun? Is it a bit of harmless fun? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co dot uh, uk all right well i've been to the dentist today boys and girls once again the dentist has looked at my tooth and <clears throat> he said i'm gonna find exactly where this is so i got the air gun and went does that hurt no does that hurt no does that hurt no does that hurt? oh yep yeah, that hurts okay okay that that so there is on not the very back molar at the top, the one next to it, there is a tiny little space on it that is very, very sensitive. But then, while trying to point it out to me, he got the metal prodding, you know that metal prodding thing that they, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it's called, it like started prodding around there. And while he was around that side, he touched the sensitive bit 
with that metal thing. My God, I screamed out. I went, ah! Oh! And I pushed him away quickly like that. It, it was the worst pain on a tooth I have ever experienced. And he said, oh, I'm really sorry. I said, oh, no, I'm sorry for shouting out like that. He said, no, please don't be. He said, that, that, would have, that could have happened with anything. You just don't know, he said. He said and, and, and so that was it. I've said to you on this show, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if I've got confidence in this guy anymore. Um, but actually, I think I still have. I do have confidence in him. Once again, he's tried something else. He's put some sort of um, varnish on there. And he put varnish on last time, but apparently there are various different sorts of this varnish which do different things. So this one is supposed to seal the root that is exposed, which is where the problem is because my gums are kind of receding all the way around. Um, uh, not because they're not kept clean, it's just it's something I've got is making this happen, although the, I don't think the dentist knows that. Um, and I don't really want to tell him. But yeah, uh, and it, is, it, is, it was so, I really, uh, you know, to, to actually pick up my arm and go like that to get him away from my mouth, I, I'd never done that before. It was just a, uh, a kind of a knee-jerk reaction, I suppose you'd call it. The pain was unbelievable. Anyway, so he's put this stuff on now, and he said to try to see how that goes. Um, other options, well, I could go back if in, in a couple of weeks, he said, give it another couple of weeks, see what happens. Go back in a couple of weeks, he might try putting a bit of uh, filling on that side of the tooth to see if that helps. Um, he says, I still may need the root canal treatment or I could have the tooth out. And there were various different options after having the tooth out. What you can do is get a little, little bridge, okay, which kind of clips on the teeth either side. So once you've had the tooth out, you'd clip this, this thing on either side, on the two teeth either side, and it would be like a false teeth, a false tooth in that particular gap, all right? But then, of course, those two teeth will be taken all the strain. Um, I think he mentioned an implant, quite an expensive thing, he said, but they work very well. It's a little bit of titanium that actually goes into your jaw. Uh, what was the other things? I could just have it out and, and, and leave it like that. He said, but there's a, there's a chance that the teeth either side will start moving inwards and kind of growing. I think, wait, I can't remember what, erup, erupting? I think he called it erupting. Uh, there's the root canal treatment, which actually wasn't as expensive as I, for some reason, I had in my head that this sort of thing would cost about 800 pounds, and it's not. It's about 250 pounds for root canal uh, treatment, but you would have several desert, uh, several visits to the dentist. Now I'm a bit, little bit fed up going at the moment, um, and I was, I wasn't. I don't, I don't, I don't go in there in a bad mood. I went in there in a, I'm fed up coming here mood. You know what I mean? Um, but he, 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 and he explained all these, and he's got little, very little models next to him, explaining exactly what would happen, um, and. That's it, really. Um, so we're going to see. We're going to still try and see if we can get away without doing any of those things at the moment um, by leaving it a couple of weeks. He gives me some uh, a box of antibiotics as well because he thinks there might be an infection. Because I've got a, it's not a pain, but I've got a feeling sort of all the way up here at the moment. I can actually feel it now. It's not not painful, like a, like a dull feeling. So we're not quite sure. So that's that's the news uh, with the dentist. All right. Um, something else I've been looking at. I mentioned to you micro lighting. Has anyone ever been micro lighting? Uh, micro lighting, which is like very tiny little planes that you kind of hang on. Something else has been suggested by me uh, to me uh, by Rob in uh, Bob in Iceland, who we haven't heard from for a long time. So if you're back with us, it's nice to have you back with us. I, we lost um, Bob. Uh, when, uh, is it Rob, Bob, Bob? Oh God, the name's gone now. Why is that name? It's Bob, it's Robert. Robert in Iceland. Bob, that's what I called you, Bob. Okay, Robert in Iceland. Uh, mentioned to me, perhaps I'd like to tie gyrocopting, like a gyrocopter. Have a little look on the internet. A gyrocopter is like a very, very small helicopter, okay? And I've looked it up on the internet and it says, a gyrocopter looks like a small helicopter, but the main difference is there is no 
engine turning the rotors. The rotors simply self-propel, which we call auto-rotate, due to the way that the air flows through them. As the engine is not connected to the rotors, this means that a gyrocopter is not seriously affected if the engine should stop in flight. So I don't know what, I, I'm not quite sure what this means. Because on one, one, one line it's telling me that it doesn't use an engine to turn the rotor. And then it says, a gyrocopter is not so if the engine should stop in flight. So I, I don't get that. Uh, it's a very short landing roll. We can land in a very small open space. It means that a gyrocopter is one of the safest methods of flying. So have a little look at that gyrocopter. Type that in. I think I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a go at that, actually. I think, I think that would be great fun. Absolutely great fun. Going up there in a tiny little helicopter, just hanging out in the sky. And if it's like a normal helicopter, I don't know if you've ever been in a helicopter, but certainly in a large plane, you know, you feel, you know, in a large plane, somebody you're going somewhere and you feel the turbulence, don't you? Occasionally. It's not too bad. In a small plane, and I've been in a small plane as well, you feel the turbulence a lot more readily. OK, it seems to me the slightest bit of turbulence and woof, you just woof, 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 jumping down and up. So I'm going to assume that with a microlight aircraft, the turbulence would be even worse, thinking that big ones not too bad, little ones much worse. A, a, a microlight, which is even smaller, has got to be worse than that. Now, what about with a helicopter? Because I've been in helicopters before, and they just don't go woof. They, they don't seem to be affected by turbulence. Helicopters are very, very smooth, much smoother than smoother. And you wouldn't think that, would you? You'd think they were a little bit bumpy, but they're not. They're really smooth helicopters. And I'm wondering if a gyrocopter would be like a helicopter in that it would be fairly smooth and there'd be none of this, none of this, you know, when, when, when your stomach ends up in your mouth. Does anyone know anything about gyrocopter? Um, I'd like to know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. OK. Email time then. Hello to uh, Carl in Yorkshire. I've known from you for ages, Carl. I thought you were dead. I'll be honest, I did think you were dead, Carl. And I'm glad to see that you're not my friend because I can't afford to lose viewers. Certainly not ones like you that like to correct me whenever I get something wrong. Carl says, um, you might wonder what I'm on about. You asked in Thursday's show who, what DWP was while talking about that flat you might have been buying. Well, I was talking about the flat that I might have been buying and I decided not to and pulled out of it. Um, something I'm not, not pleased about really because that means the lady who was selling to me cannot now move and it hold, if there was a chain, I think there was a little bit of a chain as well, that has now been held up unfortunately by me. On the other hand, you know, you can't buy, so you can't spend a lot of money like that buying something that's going to give you problems in the future, you see. You, you could be buying a problem, so I, that was it, you know. That plus uh, all the information I found out by looking on the internet by, about Peverell, P-E-V-E-R-E-L. If you, if you type that in, Peverell, P-E-V-E-R-E-L, managing agents, and uh, have a little nose around the internet and some very, very interesting facts I found about them, whether or not they're true or not, I don't know, but you know, that, is, that that was the big thing that has actually stopped me buying that because they, they didn't appear to have a very good name. Also known, incidentally, as OM Managing. I think it was OM. Let me have a look. Let's have a look here. Also known as OM Property Management. Have a look at Peverell, P-E-V-E-R-E-L, and also OM Property Management here in the UK, and you'll see exactly what I mean. I haven't got to tell you. Just have a look yourself. Carl goes on to say, interestingly, no one on benefits, which was one of the stipulations um, put in the leasehold agreement from this company, Peveril. Uh, Carl says, interestingly, no one on benefits, quote, was originally a stipulation by the landlord of the place I have been renting here in Nailsborough for the last five years. I think they must have had it in their mind that everyone on state benefits would be having loud parties all the time or something. Not quite sure what. Anyway, when I explained I'd not be doing that, they were happy to change their mind. Uh, and also DWP means Department of Work and Pensions. In other words, uh, it's anyone on state uh, benefits. So, so thanks for telling us that, uh, uh, Carl. Um, I also know that the estate agent, because 
with my um, places, I, I rent them all via an estate. I go through an estate agent. So if there's any problems, they sort that out. I have to pay for that. You know, 12%, I think it's 12% of the rental income I pay to the estate agent for looking after my properties. On the other hand, I don't have the headache. I haven't got the phone ringing with tenants. The estate agent deals with all that. And uh, one of the things they also, they don't like to let to people on benefits. Uh, and the reason given to me is because they find, and uh, this is through experience, that most people, or okay, a lot of people on state benefits just do not look after the places. You know, you imagine you're given, you're given, you're given a flat. Why should you look after it? It's not yours. It's not costing. So you're not paying for it. You know. So if you, if 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 you damage a wall or or rip a bit of cup, doesn't matter. It's not mine. I haven't got to replace it. Do you see what I mean? And that's that's why. That's a big reason why they don't let out to um, people on uh, benefits there. Um, okay, dope. Hello to lovely Jean, Jean Evans, who says, you have a great infectious smile. Uh, keep smiling, nice things happen to nice people, my old uh, dad used to say. And it's true, you are one of them, Chris. You'll be fine onwards and upwards. Are you talking about my sore throat? Well, it's gone now, I'm pleased to say, Jean. The sore throat has gone. I am firing on all cylinders and very much looking forward to my day. I really am. And uh, finally today, uh, young James sends in a couple of emails, actually, James. Uh, first of all, he says, Hi, Chris, something I wanted to find out. I went to see J. Edgar Hoover movie at my local cinema, and I have found a big price difference on food and drink at each cinema. I saw on uh, the ad poster at my local cinema that big carton thing of Coke and a hot dog was £9.80, dear. £9.80! For Coke and a hot dog. What a rip-off, isn't it, eh? He says, I nearly had a heart attack looking at the price of the combination deal. I thought, how can that be justified? But I compared the prices to the IMAX in Greenwich, and IMAX Greenwich have cheaper prices, even though, prices, even though expensive. I think to myself, it's no wonder why people take their own food and drink into cinemas. I'm sorry, the cinemas cannot justify nearly £10 on a meal and a drink. Well, it's not a meal, is it? It's just a little, I mean, a hot dog or, or even that thing of popcorn. It's not a meal. Is it? It's just a little nibble to eat while you're watching a film. He says, um, £10 for a meal and drink deal for just one person. They aren't going to make a profit doing that. And I wonder how they do justify it and what it is doing to their custom. My ph philosophy is go get your food and drink somewhere else even if it is before or after the performance of the cinema, it also makes me wonder on the future of cinemas too, as I think the new digital age has changed the music industry. Well, the digital age, of course, has changed uh, television viewing, for example. We now have great big tellers. I remember, I remember when I was a little boy and a lot of the science fiction uh, programs on the telly would show you TVs hanging up. Can I just push a button there? It's like, we're going to have a little bit of trouble focusing there. Um, uh, you know, TVs on walls. Are, oh, I wonder what it'll be like one day when we have TVs on a wall. Well, we're doing it now. Big, big TVs on wall. But you're not going to get, you're never going to get in your house unless you have a massive, massive house, a, a cinema sized screen as big as it is in the cinema. And there's something nice, there is something nice still about going to the cinema. Uh, is sitting there with all those people and watching a film on a big screen. They're, they're still in. So I think they will survive. But I mean, the, the price of the food is just a bloody joke. It really is. It's shocking. James also writes, I think there might be some people still on CB radio. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy a CB radio at some point. Uh, or, or, or I don't know. I think Ronnie's going to get me something for my birthday to do. I don't think he's going to be able to afford a CB radio, but I think he's going to get me something. I think there might be some people on CB radio. I don't know if it's as popular as it used to be as the internet has taken place, but other types of radio service you mentioned is called amateur radio service. You need to go to classes and sit an exam for that. You see, I don't know if I'd be clever enough for that. Perhaps there'd be something on the internet for me to read about that. And if you pass, the license is just £15 a year and you can make your own radio sets or buy them. I've seen amateur radio sets on eBay. Some are cheap, but there are some are cost like thousands of pounds. Uh, no license fee there. 
and I'm thinking of going back into, onto amateur radio. That is still popular. Not sure about CB radio. Uh, James, uh, are you on amateur radio then, James? Are you on that? Is that the 10 centimetre band? You see, with CB radio, you don't need to pass it. You just use it. Why do you need a license for amateur radio? Why is that? Why can't oh, you could just, just buy the aerial and you buy the radio, put them together and they work. You haven't got to really know anything, have you? You just talk. And with amateur radio, what's the big difference between CB and amateur radio? Now, I know, I think with CB radio, you can talk to people up to about 20 miles away with a, with a really good area, I think. Is it that amateur radio, you, you can go further? What, what is the big difference there? Eh? Is it called, and is it 10 centimetre radio? I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it is. What do you know about this, James? Because I have a feeling you're, according to your email here, it's, it looks to me like you're actually, or you have been on amateur radio. Is that right? Do let us know, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And uh, that's it today for the show. As always, boys and girls, uh, thanks very much for watching and listening. My email address, if you want to join in, anything we've been talking about, or indeed anything else, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.